So I'm a theoretical particle physicist at the University of Manchester. Um, what uh, I do is um, particle physicists study the fundamental particles in the universe, the smallest building blocks. And a theoretical particle physicist means instead of doing experiments, I try and make predictions. I try and understand what they're doing and make predictions for what I think they could do for experimentalists to go then look into and build an experiment to study. Um, so what sort of things do we study? Um, well, like I say, the fundamental building blocks and how they interact with the world. So this means you could be looking at anything from a black hole um, all the way down to looking at what's going on inside of an atom. I look at things known as scattering experiments. This is what's going on inside the Large Hadron Collider, which is where we um, smash two particles into each other at really high energy to see what comes out. Um, this is kind of, a, in a way, quite a basic application of E equals mc squared. Um, you've got these two particles being smashed together at very high energy, and because they've got loads of energy, they explode, and the energy from the explosion makes new particles. That's energy is equal to mass times the speed of light squared. The energy coming in is giving you matter coming out. And in particular, we're looking to understand what the remnants of these explosions are. And they are a really messy and complicated situation. So that's what I study. I, I study uh, finding ways to better understand what the output of these explosions will be. wondering if you could explain what dark energy is. Uh, yeah, if I can, I could explain it, I'd win a Nobel Prize. <laughs> <laughs> um, so effectively, when we measure the universe um, and how it's changing over time, we see that the universe seems to be expanding. Um, we do this by looking at distant supernovae, stars ex exploding, um, and we see that they're expanding and going further away from us. But they're not just going further away at a slow rate, they're getting further away faster and faster over time. Um, and this is almost like there's some sort of negative pe pressure pushing them all apart. Um, and we don't have any way to explain this currently. And our kind of lack of knowledge of what's going on is what we call dark energy. The reason why we call it an energy is it looks an awful lot like um, if you look at Einstein's equations for gravity, um, for general relativity, a sort of negative energy pressure would have this effect. And that's why we call it dark energy. And we call it dark because we don't know what it is. Dark is describing our absence of knowledge. So the first thing to be aware of is that um, You've got to really enjoy physics, it's a hard time. And you've also got to really enjoy maths. Maths is the, maths is the language we use to describe the physics. Um, and in my particular field, you'll spend about as much time doing maths as you will doing physics. They're part and parcel. So if you want to become a theoretical particle physicist eventually, you're going to need to get a good physics degree first and you're going to need to get a physics degree from somewhere which studies particle physics like modules. And the best thing I can recommend here is just contacting universities. Um, universities are very friendly, they want people to come along. If you get on the phone to the admission departments, they will tell you what you need to do to come and what you can study there. Um, it's not, there's no hidden secrets to how to get in in a way, um, because universities do want you to come. So just um, ask is, I think, the main thing to do. Um, so something that I found always helped me was I really struggled with memorising things and unfortunately that is a part of it, the A-level syllabus is at, at points. Um, and what helped me was really knowing where things came from, trying to link some ideas together um, so that I could see why the equations were what they are. I could m memorize SUVAT by also knowing where they came from in the first place. So in SUVAT's case, um, 
there are simple graphs you can draw which, um, which really describe where they're coming from. The acceleration is the area under the curve from the velocity graph and you draw yourself a little triangle on a velocity versus time graph. Or similarly, um, understanding centrifugal force um, as an acceleration that's pulling you towards the centre and that's a potential energy that's there. And it's the same sort of energy that's going into gravitational potential energy. Try and linking these concepts together and making a, a mind map of all these concepts and how they tie together really helped me solidify so that it seemed like less to remember and just more a few basic concepts that you could apply in loads of different areas. So um, what I'm currently looking at is something called a parton shower. I previously mentioned that when you collide two particles together in a scattering experiment, they explode and loads of particles come out. These particles seem to come out in a sort of jet all in one direction. We call it a jet because it's like, if you look at a jet engine, it gives you a blast of energy off in one direction and behind it. It looks a bit like that. You get this big column of particles in one direction, which we call a parton shower. Um, and I work on finding a way to predict how these parton showers will form. Now, these are really complicated situations mathematically. It's hugely, hugely messy equations and not something you can really solve by hand. So instead, you've got to find a way to turn the maths and our language describing these parton showers into something that a computer could solve. And I work on that bridge currently. I, I, I study the maths. I study the equations coming out of the maths and find is there a way I can translate these equations into a language which computers could handle nicely for us. It's really, really interesting, particularly because a lot of our students are doing both uh, physics and computer science. Yeah. So would you recommend that as a, as a sort of a dual, as, as a combination of A-levels? It is certainly helpful. I, I, that's an A-level choice I did. I, I did physics, computer science, maths and further maths. Mm -hmm. um, and it certainly sets you up a lot. You'll do a lot of computer science throughout your physics degree. Um, and it is one of the main tools we currently have to do physics, um, to simulate the world around us using computing. So it's probably the Dirac equation. And the reason being is um, it's mathematically very elegant. Um, a, a lot of mathematicians, when asked what's their favorite equation, will say Euler's equation, which um, is what gives you complex numbers. You've got e to the power of i, the complex unit, times pi is equal to minus one. I think that's definitely in the further math syllabus at A level. Um, Dirac, the Dirac equation does a similar thing for physics. It links together the um, wave particle duality of quantum mechanics with the statistics um, of an electron and the electron mass. It has all the relevant constants to physics in the equation. It's got Planck's constant, which defines the scale of quantum mechanics. It's got the speed of light in the equation. It's got the electron mass. It's got the electron charge in there, if you're going to include that part of the equation. Um, and it's very, very elegant in how it just ties everything together in a single package. Um, I say elegant, it's also math. It's, it's a beast if you're going to try and solve it. <laughs> but <laughs> So my three minute thesis pitch where you describe your, um, what you work on in three minutes is um, using an analogy for how a part and child works. And my analogy is um, let's say you want, you're an archaeologist and you want to excavate a really delicate vase. It's deep underground and you want to dig it out. And unfortunately, the only tool you've got to do it is dynamite. <laughs> you're, for, um, you're going to blow the vase up into small pieces and you're going to need to know how to stitch them back together. And this is the same when you collide two particles together in an accelerator. You're going to blow them up into small pieces and you need to learn to stitch them back together to understand what went on. 
So the first question is how might you start stitching the vase back together? Well you might look for two of the biggest pieces and see if they fit together. Um, and how understanding how they fit together really just all you need to understand is the crack between them. You need to understand how that crack occurred and to be able to line them up. And if you can understand one crack, you can apply that a couple of times over and start lining up all the edges and you really you boil the problem down to understanding how to put the vase back together. You just need to understand one thing, how it can crack in the first place. And the same thing is what we do in, um, in these partum showers. We describe them all by looking at, instead of how do particles explode, we look at how does a particle crack in half? And then how do those halves crack into another half? And so forth and so forth. And eventually you build up an explosion pattern out of that, rather than dealing with the very complicated explosion in the first place.